Hello and welcome to episode 17 of When the Flames Go Up, the ATFC podcast with me, Will Brown. A little bit of a different one today. Um, we didn't have time to get a meeting um, together this week. Um, I was at a dance night last night, um, which I ended with outable, outable, innable, cue carnage in the horseshoe in Clerkenwell. Um, so, yeah, I'm doing this on Thursday morning. I've got the thoughts of Julian and Ash to come. They've sent some voice notes um, summarising their thoughts of the Solihull game at the weekend and now looking ahead to the Easter weekend double against Maidenhead to United away on fr- Good Friday, followed by the Easter Monday game against Dorking at home, which is our penultimate home game. Um, so cue tears, hopefully tears of joy, um, if we can get three points in that one. Um, before we get into that, we've got a received a voice message from a Canadian listener. So we've now had Australia, Thailand, so that's Asia, tick, and now North America. Um, so yeah, Neil sent a voice note. I'm going to play that now. Hopefully you can hear this right. I couldn't download it, so you're just going to hear it straight through the cans. Hi there, my name's Neil Hawking. I've been uh, auditorial support since 1992. I don't fit into the home strip, which I still have. Actually, I, I was bundling up some stuff for the charity store just to clear out my wardrobe. And unfortunately, I threw out my auditorial shirt and then I went to the charity shop that I disposed of it off and looked through all the racking and uh, couldn't find it. So... I'm really disappointed. I'm actually getting my dad to send me over a new shirt. Yeah, I'm so disappointed. Actually, me just even talking about it is disappointing. Anyway, yeah, so I've been uh, living in, in Canada now for the last near enough 16, 17 years. Got three kids over here, beautiful wife. Met her at a summer camp in the States after traveling during my university years. Uh, I listened to your pod. Uh, the Shots pod on a regular basis and listening to Rob Wall every Saturday religiously. My kids do not talk to me. I've got headphones on. If we win, I'm very happy. If not, then they know. Um, yeah. So, so happy to be kept in the loop to tell you the truth for loving what you're doing. What a great season. Come on. Let's get a few more W's and get this uh, playoffs situation secured thanks for the opportunity cheers bye so there's neil thank you neil for sending that in um, if anyone else wants to get in touch um please do you can uh email atfcpodcast at gmail.com feel free to send a voice note any written letters all fine by me um and we'll we'll read them out in the show um i i love the use of of w's um as someone that's recently this year got into nfl um i've been saying let's go quite a lot this year so um yeah hopefully a big a big let's go for this weekend for for the shots coming from canada great um so let's just run through the game at the weekend which seems an, an age away um when you're hearing this um old shot at home to solihull um 3500 in attendance um just 62 i believe from from solihull which to be expected, but the, the contrast of a, a big full East Bank and and North Stand versus uh, the kind of smattering of the fans in the uh, in the away end in the South Stand was a little little bit disappointing um, for a game of this magnitude. So uh, it was fourth v fifth or fifth v fourth, old shot in fifth before the game, um, and and in general played played pretty well, I think. Um, and Solihull were very, I don't know how, how to describe them really, stoic. I think I use that word quite a lot. But yeah, very defensive. And uh, yeah, I think they were happy to sit on the counter. And you probably would with someone like Tavon Campbell, who's on on fire. Um, so he opened a score in the 72nd minute. Um, a ball whipped in, flicked on to the back post where Tavon Campbell um, finished it off, and I mean, I've I've asked the the panel, so Julian Nash will be discussing um, kind of whether it was offside and and the kind of defensive situation there. Um, it is 
it is offside. I think, I, I mean, he's luckily it's kind of on the line of the six yard box. So you can tell he's inside the six yard box as it touches that player. Um, the only thing I can think of for the linesman is maybe he thinks it's come off Ollie Harfield rather than the Solihull player. So potentially that's because their feet are quite close. So, I mean, maybe we can give them uh, the benefit of the doubt. Um, probably wouldn't be sitting here giving them the benefit of the doubt if uh, Kean Harris had not slotted home the penalty um, that we earned in the 87th minute. Lawrence Olaj breaking through the lines um, and was bundled over by Richard Stearman um, about seven yards out, which, uh, yeah, in front of a baying East Bank, just asking him to just just slot it home. Um, it, it, I mean, it worked out. Um, and two minutes later, after some after Richard Stearman was sent off, Kean Harris calmly slotted home. He, he's got ice in his veins. I was so nervous before that penalty. And he just he just just steps up, just passes it in. It's easy, isn't it? Um, so I think that's his seventh penalty of the season. So we've earned a fair few and we've scored a fair few. Um, don't want to read into it too much because uh, we are approaching the time where penalties might come into it. So let's get the thoughts of Julian Nash on the Solihull Moors. One all draw from Saturday. Yeah, going into Solihull, I thought that both teams would treat it as a must-win game. I thought it was going to be a little bit more open than what it was, but it turned out to be that the um, game actually, it felt like that both teams didn't want to lose the game. So, um, yeah, the the game started off with a good tempo, and I think unintentionally it went kind of flat um, through the bulk of the game until the first goal came on, uh, which... Um, I think it was Campbell who was um, the scorer for them. Definitely, I thought it was offside when I watched it. I, I've seen it again. I've only seen it from certain angles, um, but it definitely looks offside. Um, but then that goal actually woke us up, um, and the penalty decision, regardless if it was or wasn't, uh, that goal was coming, I felt. Um, personally, I don't think it was a penalty, but again... Campbell's offside goal it kind of evens itself out um we just didn't couldn't put the ball in the net after the penalty um we did everything but um I think we would have rather have got a point than given someone near us three but we really needed those three points we really needed those three points um looking at the table now um we really needed that three points yeah, I will. Um, Solihull game, a real mixture of highs and lows for me. I thought we looked really good going forward and created a number of chances. First half, I felt we should have been ahead and unlucky on, on various situations. I thought actually, to be fair to Theo, I thought he had an, an excellent game and has really helped that centre of midfield just when we needed it. Obviously, with Tetek going out and Kaji having to drop back in. Jonathan Page not yet ready by the looks of it. Yeah, he came in and he did a great job for us. So, you know, credit where credit's due. I thought he had a, a really good game. Second half, slightly different story. It really felt as if Solly Hull were getting on top. And... In the end, it was no surprise that they did take the lead. Although, having said that, I feel that Tavon Campbell used his nous for that goal. Yes, I think it was offside. But if you look at the replay and how he was able to uh, get goal side of Ollie Scott, you know, he's used his nous there and he's got into a great position. You could argue that the, uh, the, the corner in... And the first flick on should have been stopped. But, you know, that's just one of those things. You know, we've been second to the ball twice there. Firstly, with the first touch and then the finish. And so you can't really argue with, with that. Although, as I said at the start, I did feel as if it was definitely offside. So in the end, I was pretty happy with the point. It would have been 
pretty disastrous if we had ended up losing that game. Not only for the different points difference between the two teams, but also the confidence going into the final six games would have taken a real battering. So um, overall, I think it's a point gained. And as your no doubt cover off with the midweek results, well, I think it was uh, an even more important point actually than it felt like on the uh, on the Saturday. And as we look ahead to the Easter weekend, old shot with two massive games. Really, they all are massive at this point. But when you're playing twentieth in the league, Maidenhead United on Friday, and then twenty third in the league, Dorking Wanderers on Monday, eyes are lighting up, thinking about six points thinking about unbeaten at least, thinking about a plus goal difference if we manage to, uh, well, if we win those two games, definitely a plus goal difference. Um, yes, so let's get the thoughts of Julian Nash on, on those two games. I'm I'm very much looking forward to the Dorking game. Um, now we've got a slightly extended East Bank into the no man's land. I'm dreading Maidenhead. Um so much so I've not bought my ticket yet. Not organised train travel. I just don't know. Just scared. I just don't like Maidenhead. Just such a sticky opponent. And I'm, I'm sure Julian Nash will say the same thing right now. So, Easter weekend double header. Um, first one, Maidenhead. So, I think we don't have the best record against Maidenhead recently. Um, I know the last two seasons have both ended up in draws, um, but their record at the moment is appalling. Um, obviously, they've lost um, they've lost quite a few games. The, one of their two wins in the last six has been at home to Dorking, who's our other opponent. So I don't know how much we can take from that. Um, but um, it's a really hard one. We I think it's a must win. Maidenhead's still got a lot to play for. I don't know how this one's going to go. Um, my head says it will be a score draw, so like a one all. But my heart wants to go with 2-1 to Aldershot. So that will be my score score prediction for the Maidenhead game. So talking um, is the game on Monday. Again, we don't have a very good record against second from bottom at the league. They are in an absolute torrid form at the moment. They they've scored, they've not scored in their last two away games. They've conceded well twelve goals. Even if you exclude Barnett's six, it's six goals in two games before that away from home. Um, so they are leaking goals away from home. They're not picking up a win from anywhere. But we kind of said the same discussion about York that they weren't on a good run of form. I think Aldershot just really need to take Dorking seriously. They will take him seriously, I feel. I hope he doesn't use it as a resting opportunity and really puts Dorking to the... Um, Other teams around us have beaten Dorking recently as well. Um, So obviously Barnet and Altrigham come to mind have recently beaten Dorking and their teams around them. And they're the sort of games we should be winning. Um, so again, another winnable game. I'm actually going to go three nil to Aldershot on that one. I'm very confident we will come out with a result. Uh, looking forward to the Easter weekend. You know, we've we've got two huge games, and no one is going to say they're going to be easy games. You know, Maidenhead always seems to throw up its difficulties, but the way the midweek results have gone. You know, dropping down to seventh. Okay, we've got a game on the two above us directly, and we're still in touching distance of third. But it really feels like we do need to win both of these games. Anything less than six points, and I think we're going to start to feel the pressure. So, definitely looking at uh, Maidenhead as a as a victory, and then Dorking at home. You know, we've got to take advantage of. Dorking's situation at the moment they're, they are short on confidence they are leaking goals it's 
it's perfectly primed up for a handsome home victory. And one of the things I'm really excited about is the initiative with regard to the East Bank. You know, we're going to have an extra 600 spaces on the East Bank on Easter Monday. And if we can fill those spaces, if we can get another three and a half thousand, perhaps even close to 4,000 there on Easter Monday, I think that's again going to make a real difference. And if we're in a really good spot for the Boreham Wood game, you know, that's going to be opened up to the whole of the East Bank. And what a sight that would be if we can get the whole of the East Bank full. That would be a real sight. So I'm actually really looking forward to uh, these last two games for, for that reason as much as anything else. And worth mentioning the midweek results. A very weird situation where we had uh, Altrinum, Gateshead and Solihull all at home, all playing at home on a Tuesday before Good Friday. Now, in any normal season, that wouldn't happen. Um, but due to FA Trophy and I think one of them was a postponement, I think. I think Solihull might have been a postponed game. Um, so it meant that all three teams, all three sitting in the... Uh, in and around the uh, the playoffs, um, were at home. So Altrinum went uh, one nil down against Wildstone. So I mean, I was so excited. I thought I thought this was going to be the moment that Wildstone do us a favour. Um, two minutes later, Altrinum had equalised, and by the seventy second minute, they were four one up, and it, that's how it stayed. So Altrinum four one against Wildstone. Um, same script that. Uh, Gates head against Hartlepool. Hartlepool went 1 0 up in the fourth minute, no, eighth minute before um, Gates had equalized at half time and then went nuts um, and won 7 1. Uh, Dijon Brown getting two, Regan Booty with a goal, uh, Callum Whelan, Courtney Duffus own goal to finish things off. Um, so, yeah, Hartlepool fading away and to be honest, not safe in this league. They're only five points above the drop. Uh, and when you've been thumped 7 1, um, yeah, question marks um, are going to be posed for their uh, su- survivability this season. And then the other game was Solly Holmores at home to South End United. South End won 3 0 away. Um, so that moved them up to 10th place on 55 points um, without their minus 10 goal difference. Uh, minus 10 goal difference. Obsessed. Without their minus points, uh, they would be sitting above us and would be eighth. Um, they'd be in sixth position on 65 points. Um, and you can kind of tell, I mean, their goal difference is plus 21, which is only surpassed by three other teams, Barnet, Gateshead, and obviously Chesterfield. And yeah, so, I mean, they're going to be a, a, a force to be reckoned with next season. But a good result for our our position um, with Solihull still sitting in fifth and um, they haven't won in three now so a little a little stutter from them um and it left Aldershot in seventh place so we did move down two places due to Gateshead and uh and Aldershot winning but we have a game in hand on Aldershot and Solihull so let's get the thoughts of Julian Nash on the midweek results and where we currently sit in the table Tuesday evening results. That that game for Gateshead was the one I um, managed to get a stream off of um, for Gateshead beating Hartlepool. I wanted to see both teams and Gateshead are just hitting the right form at the right time. Um, absolute phenomenal result um, for them. I don't know if it's the fact that Gateshead are very, very good or Hartlepool are very, very bad at this moment in time. But um, yeah, that was they all had different goal scorers, so that would indicate that they have scoring threats throughout that pitch. Um, it shows it's going to how hard that Gateshead game is going to be for us. Um, South End a favour as well, beating Solial, so that that really did us a favour in our playoff picture. Um, and then obviously Altrigam starting to pick up their form as well. So it just I think those three results. Um, emphasise how important that we need to get these two wins of the weekend, really 
trot on from that because after these two games it's Hartlepool away Gateshead away um, it's going to be a tough tough old week after this weekend so coming out with six points uh, I think is essential going into those two games to be in that playoff picture come towards the last two games of the season um, but yeah the Solihull one is quite interesting because they could be the ones who slip out and we stay in but we just don't want to be the team that slips out and I think that's about it other than to say Chesterfield have now won the league they've scored their 100th goal secured their 95th point um, and will be uh, charging towards 100 points um, I was just looking at the games that they've got coming up um, the only game around us is is Gateshead they play them away in the second game second last game of the season um, other than that, I mean, their running is basically, I don't know, it's like a, um, what's the word? I was going to say Ring of Roses. It's not Ring of Roses. Don't know. Basically, they've got York away tomorrow. Kidderminster at home. Uh, Easter Monday. Wildstone away. Uh, and then they've got Gateshead away. And then they've got Maidenhead at home to finish it off. So, I mean, walk in the park for them. I wouldn't be surprised if they won all of those. Hopefully they do. Take some points off of um, Gateshead who are flying. Um, so congratulations to Chesterfield. Um, hope I never see you again. Hope I never have to go to your ground. And uh, yeah, hopefully it's a, a slightly fairer, even league next season. Um, although saying that we might have a resurgent South End, a Yeovil, a Colchester, who knows. Uh, down this league next season so uh, let's see um yeah i'll go to i think julian might have something to say um just in any other business uh it's been mentioned i think already that the final of the playoffs has been moved to uh, sunday the 5th of may at three o'clock so that actually helps me out because i was due to be working on the saturday yeah i would have got out of it but uh, it just makes it a little bit easier so uh, really looking forward to, to that. And I've also seen that the tickets are actually now available. You can actually buy a ticket for the final uh, price at an early bird price of just 20 quid. So it'd be interesting to perhaps see how many supporters are going to take up that offer. Uh, for me, I'm in the camp of not buying my ticket just yet. Um, not that I haven't got the confidence, but I'm just thinking it would probably jinx it if you get a thousand order shot supporters buying their tickets up already just feeling like it would be a bit of a jinx so uh, i'll buy the ticket when um when we're there i think and and really look forward to to that but um your know, overall confidence of the playoffs yeah you know, we're still we're still in there we're, it's still in our hands which is really important and I think the confidence of winning both Easter games would be a huge boost. And particularly as the Solihull Moors are, are struggling for confidence, Oldham can't buy a win at the moment, Halifax looking really strong. They're on the up. Altrincham looking strong. Gateshead looking strong. I think um, two, two wins there. It's something that we just need to do to make sure that we do end up in the playoffs. I'm still hoping for top five, um, but at the end of the day, I think we've just got to accept, you know, wherever we finish will be the right place of where we deserve to finish with all the ups and downs that have gone through. I think wherever we finish will be the right place, whether that be top five, sixth, seventh, or even eighth or ninth, I think wherever we finish, it will be where we deserve to finish. There was one more thing I was going to mention um, from Tuesday's results. Um, Farnborough have now won six on the bounce. Joe Haig, X shot, um, scored again as they won. So they're now on the same points as St Albans, who are in the playoffs. Um, so, but yeah, they're making a charge for the playoffs, which is quite exciting. Um, I, I didn't think I'd ever see the day of Oldershot and Farnborough playing in the conference again together after some years in the wilderness. So, um, yeah, that'll be fun. 
So looking out for those results, and uh, obviously we've. I mean, it's it's a shame we can't speak to Joe. Um, I'm sure he'd be able to uh, talk about Truro's um, travails. Um, they've played 35 games, uh, which is ju- just one less than Taunton, who are on 36, and they're both 19th and 21st respectively. So keep a look out for that. And I think um, Tamworth. Yeah, so Tamworth are nine points clear with five games to go. Um, so you'd think they'll be securing the, uh, might be securing the um, title this Easter weekend. If they win both of those games, they will be uh, promoted as champions. Um, Scunthorpe are the nearest challengers. Um, so yeah, very exciting. Um, so keep an eye on those because if we have Tamworth and Scunthorpe in this league, That'd be great. Um, Grand. Right. Well, I'm going to leave you because I need to edit this podcast at some point this morning. um, And I probably need to start work at some point. It's a logistical administrative nightmare um, to play darts midweek. So hope you enjoyed the episode. We'll be back again next week for an exciting kind of, yeah, preview for the tour of duty away at Hartlepool and another Another two big games. Uh, So up the shots for these Easter weekend games. And hope you enjoy your Easters. Catch you later.